Seoul is known for its apartment complexes and high-rises, so it's hard to believe that before the 1970s, agriculture made up 39% of the capital's economy. But even today, working right in the heart of the sprawling metropolis are farmers. Born and raised in Mukdong, famous for its pear orchards, Chung Hyun Ho has been a pear farmer all his life. Around this time every year, there's no time to rest since 450 of his pear trees are ready for harvest. This mokol pear is named after an old area in Seoul where it was first harvested in 1930. The pear was so delicious that it was even offered to kings. Now better known as Huangshil pear or imperial pear, this produce is one of Seoul's finest. Many consumers like to visit these local farms and check out the fruit for themselves. They can also directly purchase the fruit at an affordable price. Imperial pear farmers stick to eco-friendly cultivating methods so to maximize its sweetness. They use sandy soil that has excellent drainage. The popularity of mokgol pears continues on to weekend farming. What started out as only 120 pear trees in 1999 has gained so much popularity that now over 500 trees are sold each year. Uh, in addition to pears, you can plant vegetables, such as cucumbers, eggplant, or lettuce, and visit anytime you want. Mm. Located at Hangang River's Nodu Island is another urban farm. This place is busy with its special autumn harvest. The Nodelbat is perfect for raising animals and bees, so every Saturday, urban beekeepers gather to harvest honey. As a beginner, all you need is 10 hours of training before you get to manage your own beehive. With a recent increase in urban farming, people are showing more interest in bees. In 2012, Mayor of Seoul, Park Won-soon, started a beekeeping project on the rooftop of City Hall. Honeybees have positive effects on our environment, so urban beekeeping is becoming an important social trend. Just like the urban farmers, hard at work in a concrete jungle, how about getting your hands and feet in soil this weekend? We can find a more simple happiness on Nodersam Island. Signs welcome us to the Nodu Farm. What is going on here? The people at Nodu Farm look quite busy. Harvesting from early in the morning. So let's get working. There's lots of people here joining me. I don't want to skive off, okay? People prepare for winter in different ways all across the globe. In Korea, the preparation starts with kimjang, or making kimchi. These folks are harvesting the cabbage for kimjang. 
Only about 50 years ago, cabbage patches were over the Yeouido area, and every year around Kimjang season, it was a common sight to see people transporting heads of cabbage. Now people are growing their own Kimjang cabbage on weekends in this urban farmland. With an aim to revive the disappearing Kimjang culture, Seoul City hosted a large-scale Kimjang festival for the first time in 2014. Some 9,000 people took part in the three-day festival, using 1.2 million heads of cabbage to make kimchi. Participants varied, ranging from Seoul residents, companies, schools, small local groups, to foreigners. You don't have to be an expert to season it. Sneaking in a bite here and there is a little treat. Mmm, <laughs> it's delicious. Really fresh. Mm, very spicy as well. Chincha, no, no, my It's delicious. Various ingredients are used to make delicious kimchi, and by sharing it with others, you get to experience the total Kimjang culture. A little spicy, salty, but also fresh. This is my first time actually making it myself, so I'm very excited. And you like eating it? Absolutely. <laughs> it's not too spicy? You're good with spicy food? Good with spicy. <laughs> really good. <laughs> it is a bit chilly, but they're all in good spirits. Kimchi! <laughs> but the fun doesn't end here. All the kimchi prepared by the participants are packaged into boxes. And these neatly stacked boxes will be distributed to the needy. This is now the Gimchi going off to its final destination, which is people in need. What a great cause. It's been a great day at the Gimchi Festival. Another Kimjang Festival is being held in Kwangamun Square. This is a cultural event where all participants can witness and experience the Kimjang culture firsthand. A reenactment of Kimjang at a Hanok courtyard shows how everyone cooperated and helped each other to prepare for winter. It's a good chance to taste the kimchi made by kimchi masters. This is the finale of the festival. Participants gather around to enjoy kimchi and bossam, or boiled pork belly. Eating bossam with your neighbors on a kimjang day is an age-old tradition. So let's turn up the music for the party. There's nothing quite like the taste of the freshly made kimchi with boiled pork. Cheers! Mm. Are they good? <laughs> sharing the simple things in life with those around you, everyone has their share of happiness. You still need more festivities? Let's go to a special event held every fall in Sanyudo. Called Chonyudo Island, and there's a festival going on. It's called the Soul Dance Project. Lots of people dancing. We're gonna go have some fun, dance, check it out. The normally leisurely green space in the city transforms into a stage for a fiery dance party. The party starts right from the entrance. The concept of the festival is to travel the dancing island. This Soul Dance project started in 2013. It is a festival that brings everyone together through dance. Everyone can participate and just dance. After a bit of a warm-up, you can participate in other performances. Everyone seems immersed in the rhythm created by a single percussion instrument. What brings all these people together is dance. The concept changes every year, offering a special experience in everyday life.
Taking a look around the park, you will come across some creative events. There are people lying together in a remote area. Some program to do together <laughs> with couples? I don't know. I really don't know. It's very interesting though, very interesting. This is a unique dance performance for couples. But what's a festival without some fun music? There's loud music coming out from over there. It sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to go check it out. Not only professional dancers, but ordinary citizens who pass the audition can take part in this festival. It really is a festival for all. The dance party continues late into the night. For everyone here, it's been a day to remember. A place full of children's dreams and adventures. There's a special festival just for kids. Taking us back to our childhood, it is the Soul Fairy Tale Festival. Using characters and children's books, the festival focuses on themes like participation and happiness. Of the many programs, the most popular are the exhibition of character drawings done by children and the mini library, where visitors can read various children's books. This giant book makes everyone feel like a character from a fairy tale. This is the Trader's Market. Visitors can exchange books that they no longer need. Not surprisingly, mothers love this corner. The bustling English book reading booth is a huge hit among parents and children alike. Here they can get both fun and educated. The Seoul Fairy Tale Festival gets better each year, so make sure to catch the happiness it offers next time. The center of Seoul, Gwangamun. People can't take their eyes off the dozen pianos placed in the middle of the city. This is the venue for the Run Piano 2014. Designers decorate used pianos donated by firms or individuals, and the revamped pianos are re-donated to where they are needed. It's nice because it's, it's right in the middle of the city and people can just stop by and play some piano, and uh, it's nice. It's a nice little festival that they got going on right in the heart of the city, right in the middle of the city. The painted pianos are installed on the streets during the festival. Children are particularly drawn to the colorful paintings. Piano recitals continue throughout the festival. Listening to the sound of the piano on an autumn night brings us closer to the small happiness in life. Sometimes we deserve to take a break from the everyday life and join in the festivities of the city. Chilling out and relaxing after the festival is also part of the happy things in life. Traditional Oriental Forest Land is a place where you can enjoy a sauna in nature. You have to get dressed to have the Jimjilbang experience. Just outside is the charcoal sauna. Traditional oriental forest land is widely known for the charcoal that they make from scratch in the traditional way using the oak tree wood that they bring from Kangwondo province. In fact, this is the only place in Seoul that provides a traditional sauna experience with charcoal. That's why it's always crowded with people, even on weekdays. <laughs> Really nice because it's natural, you know, with the wood charcoal. So uh, I think you can breathe very well in there too. So it's 
it's more fun, I think, and probably more healthier than uh, the traditional saunas. Or at least it seems that way. You have to enter the charcoal sauna room to experience how good charcoal is for the skin. The three cave-like rooms are made of red clay and are divided into low heat, medium heat, and high heat. The temperature in the high heat room goes up to an average of 80 degrees Celsius. This is the medium heat room, which is about 60 degrees Celsius. But while all the others seem nonchalant, those who try it for the first time might struggle to stay inside. This is the flower bath, which is hot even for the experienced. They call it the flower bath because your face turns red like a flower the moment you walk in. Before going into this room, you have to put a towel over your face and wear wooden slippers. The charcoal is heated at 1300 degrees Celsius for six days and is gradually cooled to create the hot bath. And the flower bath is where the heated charcoal is first placed. The temperature in here ranges from 120 to 140 degrees Celsius. The charcoal isn't used only for hot baths here. Sweet potatoes and rice cakes are grilled over the charcoal straight out of the kiln. You can also bring your own ingredients and grill them. Inside the Jimjirabang, there are other facilities open for everyone, from karaoke rooms to arcades and resting places. Special places give special happiness. The next place is the W Seoul Walker Hill Hotel. In this luxurious hotel, you can enjoy the night view of Seoul, as well as the full service luxury spa. W. Soul Walker Hill is gaining popularity among patrons of all ages, as well as spa lovers. Away spa treatment is located on the second and third floors of the hotel, with 17 rooms and 50 different programs available, and each program has music, lighting, and aromas catered specifically to each customer's taste. The programs available here bring together the massage techniques of both the East and the West. The certified therapists will be able to release you from all your stress. The highlight of the spa is the outdoor bath from where you can enjoy the view of Hangang River. Everyone would fall for the night view here. Two large jacuzzis are available so you can enjoy the experience with your friends and family. It is an excellent place to bask in the comfort and happiness that the city offers. Now let's experience some warmth for the heart. The end of the year is approaching, and we can experience bigger happiness by sharing it through the Secret Santa event. Every Christmas in Seoul, volunteers in their 20s and 30s lead a charitable event in different regions, dressing up as Santas to visit the children in need to give them Christmas presents. Today, every volunteer becomes a Santa. All right. I'm feeling very merry. Well, we're off to make some unforgettable memories by sharing and loving so our neighbors can have a warm and wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho! The Secret Santa of Love campaign first started in Kumchungu District back in 2005. Today, it is a large-scale event participated by young adult groups and students in a total of 13 districts. It's a cold day, but the Secret Santas go looking for kids from one alley to another, feeling nervous. The most important part of the Secret Santa event is the element of surprise. Okay, we're going to go secretly inside and surprise these kids. Come on. We're making a surprise visit, of course with the parents' prior permission, and the kid looks dumbfounded when we start singing carols and dancing. 
The children's innocence and their shy but happy grin keeps the Santas focused on their role. <laughs> Happiness bursts over the child's face and spreads to the volunteers as well. They take pictures together to capture this special moment. We can't forget to visit the kids at the Sungdonggu study room. They seem to know a bit more than they let on, but they are all smiles after receiving the gifts. We hope that the Santa has helped them have a happy, memorable Christmas this year. Time flies by as we go from door to door to be the kids' secret Santa. It's a very special experience full of love and compassion. And if you want to know what that feels like, you too can put on a Santa suit to share the joy of the season with these children. The kids have been great, you know? A little bit shy, but they love the presents and the cake. You can see it in their eyes, you can see it on their face. We seek happiness and comfort for ourselves, but perhaps sharing the warmth with others is the biggest happiness we can experience.